the pumpkins are really romping away now. We self um, direct sowed a couple um, earlier in the year, but we just did find that some of the varieties were just really, really slow. We had a couple of really cold spells uh, in late May and some of the varieties really suffered. So a few of these were direct sown and a few were varieties that we'd planted at the same time as we direct sown, but we'd put in the greenhouse. So um, we sort of, it was interesting to see which ones did well and which didn't. These ropes have gone in now that we talked about before. And as the pumpkins grow, we just, as with the tomatoes, we just wind them round and that's how they get supported to grow upwards, as you can see there. And the, the ropes don't, you know, they're not attached to anything at the bottom. They're just loosely looped round there. But they support that fine. And so our next step will be to put some ropes from this frame here going across the yard so that as they go up they can go outwards and you know make the most of the vertical space here and and really later on in the year you won't be able to see this wall because of pumpkins It's the end of August now in the yard. Um, the pumpkins are doing really, really well. They've really grown very vigorously and they've created this fantastic canopy over the yard. We've got Crown Prince here, which is one of our favorites. We chose it because of flavor and good storing. And then we've got Burgess Buttercup as well. That's produced lots of, of medium sized fruits. Uh, and that's also one that we chose for its flavor and storage. So we store our pumpkins right through until sort of um, late spring next year. And we've also been breeding our own pumpkins, which uh, we've used Crown Prince and Burgess Buttercup as two of the parents. We've also added one of Carol Deppie's varieties, Sweet Meat, into our breeding program. And so we've got quite a few different varieties that we're trialing, uh, you know, up in the, the vegetable garden. But here we like to grow some of our really reliable ones that we know are going to do well. Sometimes if there's been poor pollination, the fruits are bought. So we've got a couple up here and you can tell they sort of get a bit soft and squishy and then fall off. Um, but we've got plenty of fruit in here. We've also grown um, this one here, which is called um, Zucchino Rampicante. And that is actually a different um, species to the other pumpkins. So we've got the Burgess Buttercup and the Crown Prince, which are the Cucurbita Maxima. And then we've got this one here, which is a, a Cucurbita Machata. It's really delicious. It looks like a courgette, but courgettes are actually Cucurbita Pipo. Um, this one's really delicious. We really enjoy eating this one fresh off the plant. There's a few more just growing up here. Um, so yeah, the courgettes, uh, <laughs> the pumpkins have done really well in this box and you can see how many um, we're going to get just from this small container here in the yard just by growing them upwards instead of outwards. You can imagine if we tried to grow them sprawling across the floor that they would have just gone mad and we wouldn't have been able to grow anything else in this space. The storing pumpkins, the Crown Prince and the Burgess Buttercup we've got here and then Right up here you can see the Rampicante and that one we harvest one every two or three weeks and we eat that one straight away so we're not storing those we're eating them straight off the plant. You can see if you look down the plant there's a there's a one about every leaf node so we've got several more weeks yet of picking those fresh and eating them. We've got a really nice sweet flavour so they've got a much nicer flavour than some of the other pumpkins.
out in the yard. We've um, pretty much lost the sun now and we probably won't see it again in the yard until March. For the pumpkins that we have growing down here, we managed to um, keep them going for a couple of weeks longer than the ones up the hill, which is about 70 metres above us. Uh, it's quite sheltered here, but now that we've lost the sun, and um, we're going to harvest them. So I'm just cutting all the pumpkins down um, and then we'll take remove all the vines as well when we finish. plants, a red warty thing which is currently still yellow, uh, two plants of Burgess buttercup which I think must have had some seedling variation in them because they've produced some not really great um, pumpkins and then a Marina di Chovio which is looking pretty nice. So we're quite, quite pleased with this. We'd normally grow about 10 pumpkins in this bed. Uh, this year we grew a trailing courgette which has done really quite poorly. Um, whether it was just too shaded from the other pumpkins, I'm not sure, but that one didn't produce much. And then we've got the Rampicante. Um, it's still producing some small fruits, but now that we've lost the sun, I don't think they'll really amount to much. But we've been harvesting lots and lots of uh, fruits off these all summer and right into autumn. So that's been really productive, even though we ate those fresh and we didn't store them. So all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this amount of pumpkins from such a small space in the yard. <laughs> 